what's going on y'all so if you watched any of my videos you know that i am just super into SaaS, super into building software and i really wanted to take this video to talk about where and what platforms do you have at your disposal to build SaaS applications? Because I feel like a lot of the time when folks are talking about building SaaS, especially here on YouTube and on X and other platforms, they're talking about it in the lens in the context of web applications and mobile applications. And I'm gonna sound like a little bit of a hypocrite here because I am currently building a web application, but as I've been in this space and just thinking about building software for a year, two years now, I've compiled a list of other ideas outside of web and mobile. And I really wanted to just share those ideas with y'all because there really is so much opportunity here in 2024, going into 2025 to build software outside of that normal web or mobile applications. We're gonna talk about five of these different methods, maybe less conventional methods for building SaaS and, and where to build them. And then I also want to go into some of the benefits of building outside of the typical web or mobile application. And we'll get into that at the, at the end of the video. These five less common SaaS methods are gonna go in order of like, maybe you've heard of it to maybe you haven't thought about building something like this. So definitely stick around to see all those different options. And let's hop right into the first one. So this is going to be uh, building a Shopify app to sell as part of their marketplace. And if you're not familiar with Shopify, it is a platform where individuals you know who want to sell things online and even small businesses can create a an online store very quickly and they're also able to integrate with a huge selection of apps from the Shopify app store to kind of enhance their website and potentially increase their earnings. Now, what's really cool about this is there are millions of people that have Shopify stores that sell things on this platform. And therefore there are just millions of people who are kind of at your disposal in terms of if you can think of an app idea that would enhance their store and potentially make them more money, you might not have to do a ton of marketing to get in front of these folks. Uh, they might be able to just find you organically. And obviously that's not guaranteed. So perhaps a more like reliable or robust solution to this and how I've kind of thought about building Shopify apps in the past is maybe go to a place like a Facebook group for Shopify sellers or maybe a Reddit community, again, of Shopify sellers and see what they're talking about. Some of these folks are gonna have issues that are potentially not being solved by another app on the marketplace right now. And this could be a great opportunity for you to kind of just slip in there, create something and show it to those people who already have a need for this thing. Another way that I found ideas for Shopify apps is if I am shopping on just any kind of e-commerce website, uh, anywhere on the internet, doesn't have to necessarily be a Shopify store or not. I will kind of just keep track of things that this website is doing that I haven't potentially seen before. And for example, I've seen on product pages on certain websites, uh, just a lot of different little tips and tricks that they use to keep you on that product page as long as possible and do everything that they possibly can to get you to hit that add to cart button. So you really do just have to open your mind up. And when you're browsing the internet, if you're about to buy something, think about the website, think about all the things that are on that product page or the cart or anything in that purchasing flow. If it's something unique, it is definitely something that you could potentially build and have come to life as a Shopify app. What's cool is a lot of these apps are monthly recurring costs. You know, you can set whatever kind of a cost you want with these apps, but if you're able to get users and retain them, you can have that juicy MRR that everybody is talking about. Of course, keep in mind that it's not necessarily trivial to just create a Shopify app. You do have to become familiar with how to build them and familiar with their SDKs and APIs that you will be integrating with because essentially this app will live inside of somebody's Shopify store. Um, so you'll have to get used to how all of that works. You'll likely have to do some customer support as it, you know, people are downloading it and adding it to their store, making sure that everything works correctly. But in my opinion, this is really just a great way to get into SaaS without having to build a whole giant application and also having to worry about all the marketing that comes with it. Because like I said, you have millions of people baked into this platform already. Uh, if you can come up with a good solution, they might just come to you. So the second, you know, uncommon area that you can create a SaaS application in is going to be something like a Chrome browser extension. For this, I would really just think about all the things that you do on a daily basis when you're browsing the web. And is there anything that you can potentially automate or make easier or faster for yourself through a Chrome extension? A lot of these have to do with, again, 
buying something online, if you're shopping online, but also especially in the growing age of AI, there are tons of applications when it comes to just browsing the web, maybe trying to sift through information on a particular website. And what's cool about a Chrome extension, it could be a really, really small targeted thing that is just supposed to do one thing really well. Uh, and so instead of having to build a giant web application around something, you might be able to just create a browser extension that does this one specific thing. To be honest, I think of all of the options on this list, this is probably the hardest software SaaS to actually sell to folks. Uh, personally, I don't know if I've ever spent any money on a, on a Chrome extension, but if you're looking for inspiration, I would definitely just check out the Chrome browser extension like marketplace and, and, and store to see what folks are doing in this space. If there's a really popular one, think about how you can do it better. And again, just kind of analyze the things that you do on the web and is there anything that you could potentially automate or make faster with a Chrome extension. Moving on to the third less conventional way to sell SaaS and this is one that I'm pretty excited about and I definitely have some ideas in this space um, but this is creating Slack or Teams apps and because we are in this remote world there are thousands and thousands and thousands of companies who have their entire workforce using these messaging platforms like myself uh, in my career, I've used Slack at a, at a handful of companies, and they have a bustling marketplace of apps that you can integrate into your Slack workspace. The cool thing about this method is it is definitely harder to sell to an individual user of, of Slack. So for example, if I'm working at a big company and that company has a Slack workspace, uh, I might not be one, I might not be able to buy a specific Slack app and add it to our workspace. Like I genuinely might not have the right permissions to actually do that. So instead, we can kind of pivot who we're selling to. And instead of selling directly to a person, an individual, you can sell whatever you're building directly to the company. And this is really powerful because it really definitely might not be easy to sell to a big company. You're going to have to learn B2B sales. You might have to hop on a video call and actually sell them live. But the thing is, if you're able to get a giant company who has you know, 500,000, 10,000 employees, the way that you're able to charge on these on Slack, I'm not exactly sure how it works on Teams, I imagine it's pretty similar, but for Slack, you'd be able to charge per seat of your application, how many users are in their workspace and would have access to your application. And so this is again, potentially on a, a monthly rate that they would be paying you every single month based on how many people are in their company and in their workspace. So like I said, the sales aspect of it would probably be more difficult, but the payoff from one sale, uh, you know, potentially a larger company could be a huge monetary gain. And there's tons and tons of different verticals that you could go into for building one of these apps. You could think of building something in categories like productivity, uh, health and wellness. You could also do things around team building uh, and different activities that you could do within the Slack workspace to you know, help teams be more cohesive in this remote environment. And all these things are things you could potentially sell to companies and those companies could benefit that as a perk to an employee. And it's really just a win-win for everybody. So like I said, this is something that I'm definitely very interested in exploring in 2025. I've got some ideas rumbling around and I've never built one of these things, but I don't think it's too difficult necessarily. I definitely think that the learning curve for this would be less than something uh, uh, like a Shopify app. Alrighty, and fourth on this list is going to be a website called monday.com. And this is in the like work management, project management kind of space. Um, they have a few different other projects, but just kind of focusing in on that one sector. This is uh, another platform that has their own app marketplace. And there's a, a place that you could potentially sell uh, a custom integration on top of the platform uh, that companies or individuals would buy. The reason that I'm including it in this list is because I heard a, a pretty cool story on the MicroConf uh, YouTube channel. Uh, I'll leave a link down to that video if I can find it, but uh, I like that channel a lot. And he was interviewing somebody who built a, an app on this website. And it was a really simple thing that like potentially should have been part of the software to begin with. And it was really just a way to connect the, the project management piece of this over to Google Sheets. And so I imagine that you know a lot of people who are working in project management have some kind of data, um, some kind of workflows in Google Sheets, uh, especially if they're migrating over to a different platform like monday.com. And so the ability to sync between these two things is kind of like a simple thing that, again, probably should have just existed in the platform to begin with. Um, but this founder realized that it didn't. And he was able to kind of just weasel his way in and start making a bunch of money uh, on this on this connection that he wrote. Again, leveraging some of the things that I was talking about uh, in the Shopify section, where he was leveraging folks in, in Facebook groups on, on Reddit. And he realized that this is something that people needed. Again, should have been a basic feature. And he was able to leverage that to create his own product and sell it to those individuals. Now, the platform has been around for, I think it's probably like five to 10 years is 
like when it's been mainstream. And this was an app that he built earlier on in, in the days of money.com. But I want to bring this up because there are platforms popping up like this all the time. So if you're able to notice a, a platform that is opening up and it's pretty new and it's gaining traction and they have a marketplace like this, you should think to yourself, is there anything that's like pretty basic that this thing is missing? And can I build an app for their marketplace that solves this really basic need? So like I said, kind of more like a right time, right place kind of thing. Um, but if you're able to capitalize on something like this, it could be really, really beneficial. Alrighty, on to the fifth and final uncommon way to sell software going into 2024, 2025. I'm pretty excited about this one. I definitely want to give it a try. And this method has been around like since the internet has existed. Uh, and I don't really have a cool name or anything for it, but I think the best way for me to explain what it is is to give an example. Imagine that you are a person who really likes books and you have this giant wish list of books that you would like to purchase, um, but you don't want to pay full price for books. Hardcover books cost a lot. And again, this doesn't have to be books. It could be anything. It's just what I'm using for the example. But you have this giant wish list of books and you want to buy them at the cheapest price possible. So what if you, as a developer, came up with a way to scrape uh, websites that folks use to buy books, maybe Amazon or Barnes and Nobles or any other book selling website, and you kept track of the prices of books. Well, that data becomes very useful to this very specific group of people who want to buy books at the cheapest price. So if you keep this giant database essentially of book price inventory, you would likely be able to gather up a bunch of people who wanted to buy books and send them emails. So this is really the crux of the method is it's building up a giant email list of a specific group of people who have an interest in data that you're able to gather. So somebody joins this email list, right? And they have a wish list of 10 books that you're able to keep track of somehow. And whenever one of those 10 books goes on a sale price, it's not like the normal price, you're able to send them an email that has this uh, book at a great rate. And then the way to make money off of this is if you're able to join an affiliate program for say like Amazon or maybe Barnes and Noble have one, I don't really know. And then they went to these platforms and, and purchased a book, you would get a little commission based off of whatever they bought. So that's what people do. They just build giant email lists and send people offers on like data that they have. And again, it doesn't have to be this specific example, but if you're able to build up a giant database of helpful information to a specific group of people, all they have to do is join the email list free to them. And then they could potentially save a bunch of money on the things that they want to buy and then you get a commission out of it and then in terms of building up this email list it's not like the easiest thing in the world but it's also not too bad as well you might be able to do this through influencer marketing you could reach out to somebody on TikTok who has a huge following of book lovers and say hey i'll give you 500 dollars if you mention my email list and you could probably get a bunch of people to sign up to your list that way and i really love this example because it's not conventional, right? We're not building a website, we're not building a mobile app, and we don't have to go down the conventional marketing route for these things. There are so many other ways to build software and make money from that software outside of that realm. And I think that's really exciting and something that keeps me motivated and passionate about this space. Alrighty, so that's all of the methods out of the way that I wanted to talk about. And now I just wanna highlight some of the main benefits from all those examples. If you're like, why would I you know, do something outside of a web or a mobile application? Essentially, these are the reasons why. Number one is a lot of these platforms already have traffic. So if you're bad at marketing or you don't wanna do marketing, you could potentially get away with not doing any marketing and just leveraging the traffic that these marketplaces already have. Again, this probably isn't the most reliable way to get traffic, um, but you would probably get more traffic not marketing a Shopify application than you would not marketing a regular web application or mobile app. And in a lot of these scenarios, you can probably build this app faster than you could a web or mobile application. Outside of something like Shopify, if you're not familiar with that platform, it might take a while to figure out actually how to build that app. Um, but a lot of these times, these are very small, they're very targeted, and they really shouldn't take too long to build. So if you're worried about like go to market time, this could be a really powerful option for you. And the final benefit of this is I really do believe that it is easy easier to validate these ideas. Uh, I've talked a few times about Facebook groups or just big communities of folks who are using the platform already, especially in the case of something like Shopify or Monday. Um, you're able to find these people who are using the, the platform and already have issues with it and then you're able to build off of those ideas. So these are people who are already looking for solutions and you can potentially just build something for them. So that will pretty much wrap this video up. I really just wanted to talk about 
less conventional ways of building software and selling software outside of web and mobile applications. There is genuinely so much opportunity out there outside of that realm. And so just open your mind a little bit to the possibilities and you'll definitely start thinking of some awesome ideas. If you have any other cool ways to build and sell software, leave them down in the comments. I'd love to read all about them. And I love learning about new ways to, to build software and just new applications of the things that I wanna build. So thank you a ton for watching this video all the way through. I hope you found it useful. Hope you have a great rest of the day and I'll see you in the next one.